Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into an updated Donald Trump best case scenario here as we enter mid-September, under two months away from the extremely important 2024 presidential election. Now, I do think there is going to be another debate. It came out right after the debate that Kamala Harris wanted another one and Trump originally proposed three. She didn't want to do Fox News. The only thing that I think could get hung up in all of this is if Trump says, based on how biased the moderators were in the first debate, that he demands a Fox News debate for the second one or maybe another conservative network and Kamala Harris doesn't want to do that and then maybe they'll argue over that and not have a debate. But in general, I'm going to be filling out the entire map talking about Trump's best case scenario. Can he get to 330? Can he get to 350? Can he get to 400? We know when it was Trump versus Biden, it was a huge blowout in Trump's best case scenario. But according to the electorate, where we are right now in terms of the polls and also taking into account the debate, which really was probably a Walsh, if you want to argue, maybe 55, 60% said Trump did better. Maybe 55 to 60% said Kamala did better. It's not going to make a huge difference. And I think a few days removed from it, people are going to start realizing it was, we, we appreciate the debate, but it wasn't one of those that really makes a tangible change. I mean, look at 2016 and even 2020, you could argue that those debates really didn't do much. Obviously, it's a very big outlier to have a situation where Biden has to be removed because of how bad he is at at the debate. So either way, we're going to go through this. Obviously, Washington, Oregon, California, there's really no chance Trump can win any of those states. Probably no chance Republican can win in 2028. Maybe Oregon, maybe Oregon moving on to the Trump states. All of these states, I don't know why I did that, but all of these states obviously going to be going to Trump. Uh, we'll do Nebraska. I think I'll do I'll do some of the swing states here to start. Uh, Colorado will be going to Harris, even though even in a best case scenario, I just don't see a way Trump wins it in 2024 at this point. New Mexico in a Trump best case scenario will come back to uh, Hawaii will still go to Harris. Trump will take Alaska, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, uh, Florida. Obviously, you know, in a best case scenario, he's going to take Georgia for sure. South Carolina, best case scenario. Uh, I guess I'll do the swing states last. Yeah, I'll do the swing states last just to, just to make it more uh, more digestible in terms of that. Uh, when it comes to Harris, best case scenario, I'm going to leave New Hampshire as a swing state. All these other dimples. Well, New Jersey is tough in a best case scenario. I just don't think it's possible for Trump. You could say maybe really light blue, uh, but it seems very unlikely that Trump would win New Jersey since the switch. Even with Biden, I don't think he would have won it. Same thing with New York, uh, even with Biden. I mean, there were polls that had Trump down by eight or nine. That's probably as close as he would have gotten. Now, it helps Trump with the popular vote, which really doesn't matter, but it is kind of bragging rights. So if you want to argue that, uh, that's something that you could say. Uh, when it comes to Maine, the at-large, in a Trump best case scenario, he would win the Maine at-large. It would be very close, but he would win it. And then he would also take that first district. Harris pretty much is guaranteed to win the other district. There's really no chance Trump has in terms of that. New Hampshire, I would give to Trump in a best case scenario. I think there's a chance. You know, New Hampshire is only four electoral votes, but if he takes it, that's taking four away from Harris. So that's an eight electoral vote swing. It's it's very important if he's able to do it. Um, obviously, Illinois, even in a best case scenario, is going to be going to Harris. All of the, these other states, again, we're talking about best case scenario. What would be the hardest state for Trump to win here? It would probably be New Mexico or Minnesota, I would say, and then Virginia after that in terms of the hardest states for Trump to win. Best case scenario, though, I would give Trump New Mexico very slightly. There were internal polls. There were a few polls that came out that had Trump barely trailing, I think beating Harris or excuse me, beating Biden by one. When it comes to Trump versus Harris in New Mexico, I really haven't seen any polls, but it would probably follow the same trend as a Minnesota, which would have Harris up by around five or six. Now, as for Minnesota, there were some more encouraging polls that came out recently. I think one of them had Trump down by three. Another one had Trump down five. Uh, so Minnesota is another state in an absolute best case scenario. If you're within five, you would think Trump would have a chance. Although at this point, considering there was really no big knockout blow during the debate, it's going to be harder for Trump to win some of these states that are, are, are you know further left, like a Minnesota, like a New Mexico. If it were a realistic prediction, those are certainly states I would give Harris at this point. But in a best case scenario, they're within shouting distance to where I would give them to Trump. Obviously, uh, Nebraska at large, the first district, and then best case scenario, you're going to be giving Trump the second district. He did win it in 2016. 
He lost it in 2020. You could understand Nebraska, not really a fit with someone like Harris, although it is a, it is its, its own district. It's like a bigger city. So, uh, And then all these other states, obviously, just in general, I think Trump's the favorite to win Nevada right now, probably by about two or three points. Same thing with Arizona. I think Trump ends up taking both of these states. I don't really see any reason to change that. And obviously, in a best case scenario, all these swing states would go to Trump. Georgia is an extremely important state. North Carolina is very important. Trump's looking to win that three straight times. Virginia is a state everyone talks about. I think it is possible that Trump can take it, uh, but it would be a best case scenario and it would be a very narrow margin, kind of like a 2008 Obama situation where he's just winning everything and then he also wins Virginia and Minnesota and also uh, New Mexico. Everything comes together for him. And you are looking at, I mean, let's, let's be honest, these Haitian migrants, if it gets to the point where they start taking over other small towns, which it's been reported now in Indiana, there are some, this is really going to help Trump. And I think people are going to really turn to Trump. And then obviously the Rust Belt is for sure going to be in a best case scenario going to Trump. And I would say probably right now, this is the absolute best case scenario for Trump, if I'm being honest. It would be Trump at 347. Probably a lot of these Rust Belt states will go to Trump by around two or three points, maybe even more if he's winning New Mexico and Minnesota. If you factor that in, you would think he'd do even better in the Rust Belt. But in this situation, I could get Trump to around 347. You know, with Biden, you could maybe argue Trump takes New Jersey, maybe a few other states. But with how partisan we are right now, I think that the absolute best case is probably 347 for Trump. That's with New Mexico. That's with Minnesota. That's with Virginia. That's with all the others. That's with New Hampshire. That's with the district in Nebraska. That's taking Maine, the at-large. And I would say that's pretty much realistically best case scenario. I mean, you could argue maybe a Colorado because there was a poll that had Trump only down by two, but that was against Biden. And that was like five months ago. I mean, I think we're reaching when we do that. You know, you're reaching with a New Jersey. Can you get Trump to 400 electoral votes? You're at 370. I mean, it's there's just no way. I just cannot see him winning New Jersey or or Colorado. But that would get Trump to 371. And then you would need, you know, I think Oregon would probably probably be next after that, just because there were a few close polls that gets him to 379. But after that, it's, uh, I mean, I guess maybe New York would be after that. Then New York gets, gets him to 400. And then all these other states would be shaded darker if New York's going to Trump. What a weird looking electoral map this is. But yeah, I think 347 right now would probably be, probably be Trump's best case scenario. That's with all the major swing states, along with the extra add-ons like in New Mexico. States that we were talking about Trump potentially winning when he was going up against Biden. But again, guys, what we're seeing here recently is the rise in this horrible immigration scheme that the Democrats have where now it's huge hordes of migrants taking over small cities and it's a big problem. And now the migrants, it's come out, they can't drive. And I'm probably going to do another video on it. It's just crazy. But if this continues, especially in some of these you know, more rural Republican towns, independent people are going to see that and they're not going to like it. And again, if you look at the debate, there's no way, now unfortunately it was not a knockout blow for Trump, but there's no way you can say, oh, Kamala Harris crushed Trump. That just didn't happen. So I think the debate's going to have little to no impact, which is good for Trump considering he was already trending in the polls. And I highly doubt, I mean, maybe there'll be a few liberal polls that try and spin the idea that, oh, she crushed it in the debate. But we've already got the general analysis, even from liberal, I mean, even CNN's come out and said that Kamala Harris had a bad debate performance because she completely avoided even the first question talking about the economy, not answering if it was better or worse four years ago versus today when Trump was in office versus now under her administration with Biden. So it's not like this was a great debate, even when you look at the court of a public opinion with liberals. So I don't think it's going to have that big of an impact. But in general, I think realistically, again, the best case scenario, there's no way I can see him winning Oregon. There's no way I can see him winning uh, New York or New Jersey. And so the best case would be probably something like this. Uh, Trump at 347, Harris at 191, Westenstein obviously getting nothing. That's not surprising. That's just the way it is now. Uh, there's just zero chance either of them can win. There was zero chance RFK Jr. could win. That's why I predicted that RFK would drop out and endorse Trump because it just made sense. And the Democrats had alienated RFK Jr. so much to where it seemed like it was likely 
And I do think we are going to see, I mean, Trump's going to be back out of the campaign trail. October's going to be huge. Having Tulsi, having RFK Jr., that's going to help him significantly. Realistically, I think Trump right now is probably at around 306 to 312, something very similar to the Hillary Clinton win that he had in 2016. Although this time he might actually win the popular vote because I think he's going to get better margins in California and in New York, which will trim down the Democrats' popular vote lead. I don't know if he'll eliminate it completely, but it will probably be at least within a point. Right now, I've seen models that give Trump around a 38 to 45% chance to win the popular vote, which is more than adequate, especially way better than what we would see in 2020 or even 2016 in terms of the popular vote chances. Not that the popular vote really matters. I mean, Trump could lose it by three points. As long as he wins, it doesn't matter. But it's just like a bragging right thing. Either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.